Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, this was going to be originally a bit more of an extended video, really, um, as I was going to sort of apply some of these mods. Um, so it's ended up, well, long story short, I've, had, I've got some problems with my ST in terms of um, this ROM uh, because I've got a MARP in there. So um, I will deal with that and I'll probably revisit this and be able to get this uh, mod in there. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm sidetracking myself as usual. This is more of just a bit of a news kind of video, really. Um, Related to the ST, um, if you're looking for upgrades and spares and uh, you know things for your ST, Atari ST, um, this is the place to go. Um, well, uh, you'll see down below the place to go. <laughs> this video is not the place to go. The link down below is the place to go. Um, it's Exos, um, Chris Winston's uh, website, um, which I'll show you in a minute on the phone. But first of all, here's the TOS 1.2 uh, slash uh, 1.04. Um, uh, switchable um, toss board so normally you'll get I think in the STFM this uh, the two different versions actually there's a two chip version and a six chip version most of them have got the six chip you know the six positions on the board sometimes there's only two two of the sockets there uh, for the chips um, but this is designed to fit into those two chips um, the one megabit where the one megabit ROMs go um, and give you on the, the form of this PLCC uh, chip here uh, both uh, TOS ROMs, you know, the 1.02, 1.04 Rainbow TOS, um, and you can switch using this little jumper, and, uh, you know, this pin header here. So you, can, uh, you know, wire a switch onto that, and, um, switch on the back there of your system. This came as a kit, um, <coughs> incidentally, it's a bit cheaper as a kit. I've assembled this, it's, you know, it's gone together okay. Um, I managed to crack a bit of the plastic off one of the pin headers there, but they're totally perfectly aligned, got good solder points and things. Um, I did check all the connectivity here, the PLCC ROMs in the right way, I did reseat it. Um, and the reason I'm explaining these things is just to help you understand what the problem I was having really. There's nothing actually wrong with this board. Um, I think it's my MARPET um, and it could actually even be also related to the 16 MHz CPU I've got in my ST at the moment. I'm not sure, I don't see how it would be you now I think about it because there's just some clocks, you know, some switching control. Uh, you know, logic going on there um, with regards to the 16 megahertz clock and the, um, I think it's the uh, AS line or something. So I don't really see how that would be causing this ROM not to boot. But anyway, there's nothing wrong with it. Like I said, I've checked it, dumped the ROM. And there's nothing wrong there. It just doesn't work in my ST. Um, and I, I put that onto the marper. I did speak to Chris about it, and he, he had actually come across someone else with the marper that had a similar problem. And I think the way he explained it is because this is a faster um, PLCC ROM here. Um, I think it's something like an ST, uh, sorry, 27C4096, you know, it will run faster. It reacts, it responds quicker, you know, it's pr the propagation times there are quicker. Um, and if there's any noise on the bus, uh, which I think the MARPET is actually helping generate, um, it can screw up this uh, ROM. So I think that's what it is anyway. So um, those are pretty cheap. I think they're about £25-ish. Um, might be a little bit cheaper if you get the kit so um if you want you know a different version of toss you know because 1.04 is what you really want on a an stfm well uh, and 102 really for the backwards compatible with some of the really old stuff uh, if you've got original games and things that haven't been patched so have a look at that uh, this was the version one um 16 megahertz cpu upgrade so um as you can see you did a fantastic job here of shrinking the, the design down if, if you watch some of my earlier videos there when i got the 16 megahertz working that was based on uh, chris's initial prototype there i did um previous to that i did actually follow some of the guides that were already sort of on the internet um, and i think the basic design there was the logic was okay i guess but it just wasn't a very good circuit and i, I was running into problems at that, that, that point i contacted chris because i knew he was working on the 16 megahertz stuff and he let me use the pro his original prototype board which is what i did you know i think i was using three if you look back at that video you'll see i've got 374 logic chips with the larger dip type packages on a bit of um uh and I said breadboard, not breadboard, very strip board. That was how I um, implemented it on mine, and that works, that's fine, it's been rock solid. But um, yeah, so this was his final you know, revision of that, if you like, his own little PCB that he assembled here, and it just fits nicely on the top of the chip there. Um, I think this is one he sent me for free, actually, because there's a, there a pin missing, the, see, the clock control pin is broken off or something, um, I think. I think he's, yeah, I think he soldered it back on, it's working, but it's, um, yeah, anyway, you sent me that for free, so that's not cost me anything. I might do a giveaway at some point. If I can think of a good competition or something, um, that will perhaps draw some attention to Chris's website. 
I might do a giveaway. It's just trying to think because I don't want to give it away for nothing. You know, someone might just sell it on eBay or something. I'd rather try and give it away and at least get Chris some people visiting his website um, or something along those lines. Um, and then this I received. Um, I think it was Thursday or might be Wednesday or Thursday last week. Um, I love the the sticker here, made in Great Britain. Oh well, made in Britain. Um, yeah, it's pretty sweet again. Um, so this is his V1.5. Is you know is is He's redesigned this effectively. Yes, yeah, it's a slightly larger PCB there. Well, you know, it's not taking up any more space inside the case. Um, but it's just used one, I think it's a GAL. Um, yeah, he's used one single GAL uh, rather than this three chip solution he's got going on there. Um, and the, the logic is a little bit enhanced here. He's you know, added some extra conditions and things in there to allow this to work with a faster ROM. Um, so instead of you know on this this model, whenever you're accessing the ROMs, um, the address decoding is done by is it a glue I think, um, and that address decoding has been has been done at eight megahertz. On this one, he's handled that address decoding of the the TOS ROM on this board and this you know on the CPLD here uh, the uh, not CPLD and the GAL. Um, He's got the address decoding logic built in there, so it can be running at 16 megahertz. And then with a faster ROM, you can read at 16 megahertz as well. Hence why you know they came up with this board. Um, so those two in conjunction give you better performance than you would do on the, just the straight V1. Now, I wouldn't want to put anyone off the V1 because if you just want a really simple, quick, and easy upgrade to 16 megahertz, the V1 is fantastic. It seriously is. Um, it's the simplicity of it. You've got like one or two wires or something that come off it. Um, and that's it, once for your switch, I think once for your 16 megahertz that comes in from the shifter. Um, is it pin 39, I think, on the shifter? Um, anyway, um, all you've got this, you know, like I said, this new combination of faster ROM, um, the ROM decoding built onto here on this single chip solution. Um, so that's very cool, and they're very cheap, these, you know, one of these upgrades is, I set you back about £25, £30-ish, I think, maybe a bit more, might be 40 for the, this one, I don't know. I think that one is about 25 um, Now the CPUs, he sells these as well, so if you've not got a 16 megahertz CPU, um, and it's worth knowing, you can see it says uh, 68,000 P12, uh, sorry, it's probably blurring as usual, um, but it's also stamped on the chip there, 16 megahertz. These were genuine 16 megahertz ones rated, you know, by Motorola at the factory. Um, so standard P12, you could probably run it at 16 megahertz, but as you, if you look back at my videos, when I tried just running a straight P12 that was marked at 8 megahertz, it ran okay for maybe 40 minutes, 50 minutes, and then it started to overheat. So, but these genuine 16 megahertz ones, you don't get that problem. Um, I've had one of those from him already, actually, so my, I've got three now, actually, effectively here. Um, so yeah, it's well worth getting a CPU from him as well. But I think they're about 15, 15 pounds ish with a bit of postage. Um, it's always worth buying a few things at once if you can, just helps on the postage costs and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, really sweet. So I'm a bit disappointed I can't get around to just showing you a bit more about this now and gaining the extra performance there. And I didn't really, I've not really touched on that. Um, I mentioned it briefly that this this is obviously faster than the one point the, the version one. Um, it's I think it's on. From memory serves, it's something like 30 to 40 percent faster on the stuff related to TOS. Now, it, when you're doing benchmarks and stuff, obviously you can see that translates straight away into the uh, you know the TOS benchmark there, uh, the ROM benchmark, uh, your ROM access or whatever it is. But it also has an effect on all the other things as well, which kind of makes sense because you you've got GDI calls going on and TOS calls going on as you're doing the different tests and things uh, you know on the benchmark software there. So. Um, it affects lots of other things, even blitzing. You know, it's amazing what a difference um, this, you know, the address decoding here and the fast ROM actually make to the STFM. So, um, yeah, check out his website. I'll just show you actually on my phone now um, his website, and I'll post the links down below. Uh, sorry, to get the aspect ratio the orientation right. Just scroll down. Um, so you can see there STFM. Um, simple booster rev one 25 quid that is just an absolute bargain that seriously is um, one thing I will say about these easiest way to do one of these to fit one of these you want a socket on your on your motherboard really and they, they come you know the 68,000 you got on there a standard the 8 megahertz chip soldered on uh, I would say it, unless you've got a really good desolder station you're very experienced at desoldering just cut the thing off cut your old CPU off use a you know, a, a, a knife or something. Pro the pliers are probably a little bit better, really, really fine nose ones. And just snip every single pin around the, C the old CPU. Remove your CPU, 
use your desoldering pump and your soldering iron and just remove all the pin that you know the, the pins that are soldered through there and just clean it up inspect it make sure you're not damaged any traces the other way is with a knife you know you could use like a craft knife or something but the, I'm always a bit apprehensive in recommending that because you'll find that you know as you're sliding it along trying to cut through the pins you can slide through and cut the tracks on the board so actually using a pair of cutters wire cutters really you know fine tip wire cutters is the best thing and then once you've cleaned up all, you know, removed all the pins, unlocked all the holes, just stick yourself on there a 68,000 socket. Um, if you get one of these, um, it's worth noting because this has got a socket already there as part of the thing. You know, it's built onto it. I think I don't know if he ships them that way. I don't know what his plans are for these because they're not these. The version 1.5 doesn't quite appear on his website for sale just yet. Um, then uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, it'll sit a little bit higher than uh, a standard CPU will on its own. So you might have to remove the metal shield and. Um, that sits on top of the CPU, if that makes sense, you know, the bit that goes underneath your keyboard. And that's the other element of the problem that I've had with this. It wasn't just the fact this wasn't working. I thought, well, okay, I'll put that aside. Maybe I'll have a look at doing this anyway. And then I realised that because this sits higher up, um, the metal shielding needs to come off mine. And I'm using the metal shielding, actually, with a bit of foam to hold down my marpet. And on top of the metal shielding, I've got a sim rack related to the marpet sat there so for me removing that bit of shielding is a bit of a problem at this stage but what I'm going to do is get one of the, the 4 meg upgrades from Chris's website here um, and that should deal with that so I will be able to come back to all this stuff in a, a, a subsequent you know, future video uh, you can see it's got mice there that will be fully cleaned and tested and stuff how much are those 15 quid that's a bargain you you know try and buy an, a good quality clean working mouse off eBay they're 20 quid-ish usually um, you're lucky if you get one 15 quid and you'll probably have problems with it if you if you do find one there, uh, power supply is 35 quid, um, that's good. Um, so here's the one of the RAM upgrades I'm thinking about getting. You see it sits on top of your MMU, just like the Marpet does. And it's got these really nice flat flexes coming off here. One, uh, one goes to a little board there to fit under your shifter chip. So that's what I'm going to do. And that will mean that I can just, because there's no SIM, the memory's built on top of the, the, the PCB there that sits on top of your MMU. I don't need, I want the SIM rack, so I don't need the shielding at all. Um, what else we got? He's got sort of other memory adapters here, one that uses SIMs, uh, fits over your, um, where your DRAM chips go, I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, there's the TOS um, switchable board, £18 for the kit, that is a bargain, an absolute bargain. Because um, it must be three or four quid for that PLCC chip at least, maybe well a couple of quid probably um, but you know by the time you've got all the pin headers and the socket and the component you know the jumpers and the cap and stuff on it that's that's really good really good value um, and then fully assembled it's 25 quid there so um, yeah if you want a switchable toss uh, have a look on his website it's also got the HD um, high density floppy disk drives as well if you want to stick a high density floppy uh, disk drive in your Atari ST um, toss ROM sets as well if you want one of those it's also got the 1.4 uh, 4.4 meg floppy um, PCB um, with part, I think it's a kit, yeah, parts with PCB, so you can add a 1.44 meg drive to your ST. Uh, not all STs will support them, it depends on what uh, Western Digital Floppy Controller you've got on there. I think you, these use the Ajax one or something, so anyway, that's a complete kit, so that's nice. It's also got kits here for the power supply, if you've got a problem with your power supply it needs recapping. Um, and it's not just caps, it puts a, an uprated bridge rectifier in these as well, so it's well worth looking at one of these caps. Even if your power supply is okay, but you've never done anything to it, uh, look at getting one of these kits because what are they about 15 quid a year 15 quid you can't go wrong just you know take some time there just to desolder all the old components check the polarity of the caps and things make sure you get your bridge rectified the right way around um, and within about 20 minutes you'll have a pretty much good as new power supply and it'll last a lot longer especially with that um, it's used really good quality high ESR caps I think uh, sorry lower ESR caps and it's used um, uh, like I say an uprated bridge rectifier so that's one of the things that fails on the ST if you're not careful and you get like a ringing sort of thing going on as well with the low quality components they're using some of those old PSUs um, yeah he's got sims and dims and things related to some of the upgrades and things he's got on there and also this is quite cool as well I've struggled to get one of these uh, you can see that the uh, extra length floppy disk drive cable um, now if you get something like uh, HXC um, that's the first problem you're going to get you'll, you'll mount your HXC inside and find it short by about half an inch or something it's pain in the arse so it's nice that he does those eight pounds that's a, that's a bargain as well really um, he's got some of the bits and pieces here uh, an old, old, old memory board there for the STFM it's just a PCB only I think and some connectors there's the CPUs 15 pounds for 16 megahertz 68,000 that's a bargain 
an absolute bargain. Um, a few bits about Falcon spares and things there, and I see spares as well. So if you get an ST and you, you've got a particular faulty, you know, a faulty chip or something, you want a replacement, he's the guy to talk to. Um, he's got quite a lot of old stock. Um, yeah, so from five pounds again, bargain. Uh, there's even a set of DRAM there, the original DRAM. If you want to add the 16 uh, DRAMs to your 512, you know, your 520 ST. Um, yeah, talk to him because he's got the DRAM there for that as well. I think there's a couple of resistors and caps. You have to put the bypass caps and things in there as well and solder three resistors, but it's a complete kit as far as I can gather. Um, and switches as well. So anyway, check out his website. Um, I'm sorry I can't really show you much more here, um, but like I say, we will revisit this in a future video. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks a lot for this, Chris. Uh, much appreciated. Um, at some point, when I've ordered that 4 meg, um, uh memory upgrade, hopefully I should be able to revisit this. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.